Quizzes are an essential element of every online course, which allow students to reflect and test their knowledge. As mentioned before, we use the GitHub flavored markdown notation for tasks as an inspiration for quizzes. Long story short, everything that is related to quizzes is defined as a combination of brackets with brackets or parentheses. LeaScript currently supports five different types of quizzes and one so-called generic type, which can be used to create custom quizzes of any kind. Additionally, it is possible to tweak every quiz with additional features, such as hints, a resolution that is presented if the user solves the quiz by their own or clicks onto the show solution button. And finally, as you have seen it with tasks, you can attach scripts to each quiz in order to implement more sophisticated quizzes or simply to log the output. Within the following section we will introduce the five types of quizzes which are currently supported by Lear Script. Additionally, you have to know that users cannot fail. By default it is possible to retry a quiz until it is solved or the user clicks onto the Resolve button. The only thing that is counted is the number of trials. If testing knowledge becomes something deeply personal, without in any limitation on the number of trials, why should anyone cheat at all? In this sense, LeaScript is meant to be a language for learning and education instead of assessment. But, if you want to, you can also tweak this by using script's winking face. A multiple choice quiz can also be interpreted as a task list with a predefined solution. Thus, the only thing that has to be done is to surround your ASCII checkboxes with additional brackets, which are followed by a line of markdown, Lear script. As you can see from the example, it does not matter whether you use lowercase or uppercase x to mark a checked element. The starting dashes for quizzes are also optional. You can omit them and GitHub and other markdown renderer will present a single paragraph. Or, you can also use an indentation of at least four spaces, which will be presented by other interpreters as code. However, all the following representations will be interpreted by Lear Script as the same quiz. If brackets are used to define checkboxes, why not using parentheses to indicate radio buttons? In contrast to multiple choice quizzes, only one option can be selected. You can also omit the starting dashes and or use indentation as with multiple choice quizzes and use upper or lowercase x to indicate the solution. However, you can also define multiple possible solutions a user might select only one option. But multiple might be correct. Thus, if the user selects the first or the last option, the quiz will be marked as solved. Or if the user clicks onto the show solution button, both options will be presented. Using single choice quizzes, it is also possible to define something simple as a true or false quiz. You can also combine multiple, single and multiple choice quizzes into one larger matrix quiz. The vector quizzes are now simply defined as rows, whereby you have to define a custom header, which represent the solution options. It makes no real difference if you use parentheses or brackets within the header line. Use brackets if you want to insert parentheses and vice versa. However, within the quiz body, which is contains the quiz vectors as rows, the brackets and parentheses make a difference. The first row gets presented as multiple choice with checkboxes, while the second line defines a single choice with radio buttons. The number of elements within a row does not necessarily have to match the number of elements within the head. Although it might be rendered strangely, this does not cause an error. You as a course designer can see that there might have a mistake occurred, but maybe you use it with a purpose.
A simple text input quiz is defined only by two brackets that contain the solution string. For these simple kind of quizzes, it is currently not allowed to add a starting dash but you can use optional indentation. The reason for this is that in the future we would like to extend the usage of text and selection quizzes to be used everywhere, within paragraphs or tables to from closes. The user input will be compared with your solution string. And if and only if they are equal the quiz will be labeled as S solved. For different reasons it might be necessary to clean up the input. In order to deal with different types of spelling, uppercase and lowercase, etc. For this purpose scripts can be associated to a quiz, see therefore section associated scripts. Finally, a selection quiz is a collection of LIA script markdown options that are separated by vertical bars. Pipe dot. The solution is defined by the option or options that are surrounded by parentheses. An option can be any kind of LIA script in line element and since vertical bars are used as separators, you can simplify the readability by using new lines. This type of quiz allows you to have multiple correct options and starting dashes are not supported. Yet, due to their future usage as native input elements for closes. And you can use indentation, such as it is possible for all quizzes. Generic quizzes can be used to define any kind of quiz. The course developer can define own types of quizzes whereby the following combination of brackets with an additional exclamation mark has to be associated with a script. This script does only generate a random number, outputs the result in an alert and checks if the random value is less than 0.2. And if so, the quiz will be marked as solved otherwise not. Thus, the last statement has to be true in order to mark a quiz as solved. Any other value will be accounted as false. The usage of associated scripts for quizzes will be described in detail in section associated scripts. Not all of the previous examples we have shown were perfect in the sense of accessibility. Although these quizzes look good for us, they might not be perfectly for people that require a screen reader to go through a course. However, you can improve your quizzes by asking your question as a paragraph, which is followed by your quiz. This way Leah script will associate or label the quiz with your question. If your question requires more elements, then it is also possible to group it with supplemental elements by putting it into a single HTML element such as a div. The div will get a unique ID and the question will be labeled with this ID by using the ARIA label ed be attribute. All of the following elements can be added to any type of quiz that you have seen before. This includes an arbitrary number of hints, a more detailed solution or a custom script that handles the user input. To any type of quiz you can add as many hints as you want. The pattern is simply two brackets with an additional question mark. If you want, you can also add starting dashes to the hints. The user can reveal these hints, step by step by clicking onto the light bulb or show hint button. And finally, some quizzes might require some more explanations, if they are solved or not. Therefore, simply use two lines that are defined by at least three asterisks to group your solution. The solution explanation can contain an arbitrary number of Leah script elements. In this case the solution contains an ASCII art drawing. But it can be anything, such as an image, a video, or even something like a small game.
The following section contains a list of use cases and ideas how to use quizzes and scripts in association to generate a more complex user experience. If you are using for example the text quiz and you want to react to different ways of speaking or to clean starting and trailing white spaces, then you can attach a script to your quiz. The at input is marker that will be substituted by the current user input. Trim and to lowercase a JavaScript functions, methods that are used to clean the input string. The last statement of your quiz script defines if the quiz is marked as solved or not. Only if the last statement evaluates to true it is marked as solved. For any other value it is simply a fail trial. Try out the following quiz. You can now enter, dam, or, dam, in different ways, surrounded by spaces. At input will be replaced by the current state of the quiz that should be checked. If you are not sure how the input might look like, you can always experiment with a simple alert that shows the current input. The output or in Lear script terms the at input gets substituted by a string without apostrophes. This might look strange since you have to add apostrophes within the code, but all inputs are substituted without any additional type formatting. This way they can be used in different ways and even contain pieces of code. A selection quiz is defined by a number that represents the current input, starting from zero. The initial state is marked with minus one to indicate that nothing has been selected so far. In this example A would be represented by zero, B by one, C by two and so on. A multiple choice quiz is represented by an array of ones and zeros, whereby a one means checked and zero the opposite. A single choice quizzes behave similar as a selections. The state is represented by a number starting from zero, which represents the first option. A quiz that has been not touched by the user will return minus one as input value. As matrices or arrays of vector quizzes, their input state is represented as an array of multiple choice and single choice states. Thus, a list of lists with zeros and ones as well as numbers. In case of a generic quiz, the developer is responsible for defining and storing state. Thus, there will be no input. The only case where it input gets substituted by a value is when the user clicks onto the resolve button. This is indicated by the input true. There might be the rare case where you have to send the user input to an external service to check them. Scripts in Lear script can also define asynchronous code, as it is displayed within the example. In Lear script, we can use some command strings that trigger a certain behavior. These are global to all scripts and will be described in more detail in section communication. Additionally, you can see a function call within the example. SetTimeout triggers the execution of the internally defined function which performs an alert with the user input and then sends true back to the internal quiz event. Handler. Every script is executed with an additional send object and send. LIA means send this back to Lear script. Thus, the result could also be evaluated by an external service. And this result will then be used to control the quiz. Let us extend this example a little bit further. The send to LIA can have two meanings. One if everything was okay while the second might be the result of an error. Send. LIA can have three values. The first is the message. The second one contains more detailed information about the result, which is not required at the moment. While the last value tells Lear script if everything was okay or by using false that an error has occurred, the default value is always okay.
Thus, if you try out the following example, you will have to wait one second until the result is evaluated, which in this case always results in a solved quiz. But, if you do not add any input, then an error message will be displayed. We would like to note that this is only one method to obfuscate a quiz by using JavaScript, in this case by using the function btoa. btoa creates a base64 encoded ASCII string, while ATOB does the opposite. You can try out to the following two scripts to encode and decode different strings. The result is a quiz, where it is not possible to see the solution immediately, simply by getting a glimpse onto the raw course document. It might look tedious to create these trailing scripts and to add them again and again to your document, which makes a course harder to maintain and to develop. However, in LearScript you can define macros that can be used to solve repetitive tasks. As depicted in the example, you can define custom macros within an HTML comment of a section or within the main comment at the head of every document. Wherever you write the macro at custom quiz within your document, this macro will be substituted by the content defined in the HTML comment, which comes between a custom quiz and at end. For more information, see section macros. You can further parameterize your macros. As you can see in the code, there is an at zero, which can be interpreted as a placeholder that shall be substituted by the first parameter of your macro call. That's it. You can add as much as at custom quiz dash macros and if you do some changes. You do not have to go through all scripts but instead you only have to change one single macro. By defining macros it is furthermore possible to create LIA script libraries that can import it into other courses, see therefore also section macros. The quiz for adding two numbers was actually taken from the presentation of Greg Wilson. And it gives a good example for what scripts can be used for. Instead of logging and checking if an answer is correct or not, we should use it to assist students while they are learning and try to identify patterns in wrong answers. As you have seen it for tasks, the result of a script can also be published. In this case the topic is defined by the output attribute. Other scripts can be defined that are subscribed to the output of the quiz, see the different at input macro. These scripts are executed when the output of the previous script changes. Every script can be used to identify another pattern. Since students can be wrong for different reasons, we need to identify such patterns and react properly instead of measuring only fail and success. With Lia script you do not have to come up immediately with a perfect online course. You can adapt it in little steps and let it increasingly grow. Two-digit addition with regrouping. OK, German articles behave strangely. This is a more complex example of a generic quiz that is connected to multiple scripts within input, which are implemented with a single LIA script macro. The following code block shows how this quiz was actually implemented.